Shah Alda was the widow of the Ayyubid Sultan as Saleh Ayyub, who played a crucial role after his death during the Seventh Crusade against Egypt. She was regarded by Muslim historians and chroniclers of the Mamluk time as being of Turkic origin. She became the Sultana of Egypt on May 2, 1250, marking the end of the Ayyubid reign and the start of the Mamluk era. Background Shah Jaralda was of Turkic origin, and described by historians as a beautiful, pious and intelligent woman. She was purchased as a slave by a Saleh Ayyub in the Levant before he became a sultan and accompanied him with his Mamluk Bey Bars at El Karik, during his detention there in 1239. Later when he became a sultan in 1240 she went with him to Egypt and gave birth to their son Khalil who was called al-Malik al-Mansur. Sometime after the birth, as Saleh Ayyub married her, in April 1249, as Saleh Ayyub, who was gravely sick in Syria, returned to Egypt and went to Ashmum Tana, near Damietta after he heard that King Louis IX of France had assembled a crusader army in Cyprus and was about to launch an attack against Egypt. In June 1249, the Crusaders landed in the abandoned town of Damietta, at the mouth of the River Nile. As Saleh Ayyub was carried on a stretcher to his palace in the better protected town of Al Manshura, where he died on November 22, 1249, after ruling Egypt for nearly ten years. Shah Alda informed Emir Faik ad-Din Yusuf ben Sheikh in Tawashi Jamal ad-Din Muzan of the Sultan's death but as the country was under attack by the Crusaders they decided to conceal his death. The coffined body of the Sultan was transported in secret by boat to the castle on al Ruda Island in the Nile. Although the deceased Sultan had not left any testimony concerning who should succeed him after his death, Faris ad-Din Akhtay was sent to Hassan Kif to call al-Mu'azm to Ran Shah, the son of the deceased sultan. Before he died, the sultan signed a large number of blank papers which were used by Shah Jaralda and Emir Faik ad-Din in issuing decrees and giving sultanic orders and together they succeeded in convincing the people and the other government officials that the sultan was only ill rather than dead. Shah Jaralda continued to have food prepared for the sultan and brought to his tent. High officials, the sultan's mamluks and soldiers were ordered, by the will of the, to swear an oath of loyalty to the sultan. His heir Turan Shah and the Artaburg Faik ad-Din Yusuf. Defeat of the Seventh Crusades the news of the death of Asaleh Ayyub reached the Crusaders in Damietta and with the arrival of reinforcements led by Alfonso, Count of Poitou, the brother of King Louis IX, they decided to march on Cairo. A crusader force led by Louis IX's or other brother Robert I of Artois crossed the canal of Ashmum and attacked the Egyptian camp in Gidila, two miles from al Mansura. Emir Faik ad-Din was killed during the sudden attack and the crusader force advanced toward the town of al Mansura. Shah Jaralda agreed to Baybars's plan to defend al Mansura. The crusader force was trapped inside the town. Robert of Artois was killed and the crusader force was annihilated by an Egyptian force and the townspeople, led by the men who were about to establish the state which would dominate the southern Mediterranean for decades. Baybars al Bundukdari, Is al Din Ibik, and Kalor and al Alfi. In February 1250, the dead Sultan's son al Muazzam Turan Shah arrived in Egypt and was enthroned at al Salhir as he had no time to go to Cairo. With his arrival, Shah Jaralda announced the death of a Saleh Ayyub. Turan Shah went straight to al Mansura and on April 6, 1250 the Crusaders were entirely defeated at the Battle of Ferris Kur and King Louis IX was captured. Conflict with Turan Shah Once the Seventh Crusade was defeated and Louis IX was captured, 
Troubles began between Turan Shah on one side and Shadr al-Dur and the Mamluks on the other. Turan Shah, knowing he would not have full sovereignty while Shadr al-Dur, the Mamluks and the old guards of his late father were around, detained a few officials and started to replace old officials, including the deputy sultan, with his own followers who had come with him from Hassan Kif. He then sent a message to Shadr al-Dur while she was in Jerusalem warning her and requesting her to hand over to him the wealth and jewels of his late father. The request and manners of Turan Shah distressed Shadr al-Dur. When she complained to the Mamluks about Turan Shah's threats and ungratefulness, the Mamluks, particularly their leader Farasad Din Akte, were enraged. In addition, Turan Shah used to drink alcohol and when drunk he abused the bondmaids of his father and threatened the Mamluks. Turan Shah was assassinated by the Mamluks at Faris Kur on May 2, 1250. He was the last of the Ayyubid sultans. Rise to power. After the assassination of Turan Shah, the Mamluks and emirs met at the Sultanate Dillas and decided to install Shadr al Dur as the new monarch with Is al Din Ibek as Art Harburg. Shadr al Dur was informed of this at the Citadel of the Mountain in Cairo and she agreed. Shadr al Dur took the royal name Al Malik Arismat ad Din Um Khalil Shadr al Dur with a few additional titles such as Malikat al Muslimin and were lead at al-Malik al-Mansur Khalil Amir al-Mu'aminan. She was mentioned in the Friday prayers in mosques with names including Um al-Malik Khalil and Sahabat al-Malik as Saleh. Coins were minted with her titles and she signed the decrees with the name of Walida Khalil. Using the names of her late husband and her dead son were attempts to gain respect and legitimacy for her reign as an heir of the Sultanate. After paying homage to Shadr al Dur, Emir Hassam ad Din was sent to King Louis IX, who was still imprisoned in Al Mansura, and it was agreed that Louis IX would leave Egypt alive after paying half of the ransom that imposed on him earlier in exchange for his life and Damietta. Louis surrendered Damietta and sailed to Acre on May 8, 1250, accompanied by about 12,000 freed war prisoners. Conflict with the Ayyubids News of the murder of al-Mu'azm Turan Shah and the inauguration of Shadr al-Dur as the new sultana reached Syria. The Syrian emirs were asked to pay homage to Shadr al-Dur but they refused and the sultan's deputy in al karak rebelled against Cairo. The Syrian emirs in Damascus gave the city to an Nazir Yusuf the Ayyubid emir of Aleppo and the Mamluks in Cairo responded by arresting the emirs who were loyal to the Ayyubids in Egypt. In addition to the Ayyubids in Syria, the Abbasid Caliph al-Mustazim in Baghdad also rejected the Mamluk move in Egypt and refused to recognize Shadr al dir as a monarch. The refusal of the caliph to recognize Shadr al-Dur as the new sultana was a great setback to the Mamluks in Egypt as the custom during the Ayyubid era was that the sultan could gain legitimacy only through the recognition of the Abbasid caliph. The Mamluks therefore decided to install Is al-Din Ibek as a new sultan. He married Shadr al dur who abdicated and passed the throne to him after she had ruled Egypt as sultana for about three months. Though the period of Shadr al durs rule as a monarch was of short duration, it witnessed two important events in history. 1. The expeaking of Louis IX from Egypt, which marked the end of the Crusaders' ambition to conquer the southern Mediterranean basin, and 2. The death of the Ayyubid dynasty and the birth of the Mamluk state which dominated the southern Mediterranean for decades. To please the caliph and secure his recognition, Ibik announced that he was merely a representative of the Abbasid caliph in Baghdad. To placate the Ayyubids in Syria the Mamluks nominated an Ayyubid child named al-Sharif Muso as a co-sultan. But this did not satisfy the Ayyubids and armed conflicts between the Mamluks and the Ayyubids broke out. The caliph in Baghdad preoccupied with the Mongols who were raiding territories not far from his capital, preferred to see the matter settled peacefully between the Mamluks in Egypt and the Ayyubids in Syria. Through negotiation and mediation of the caliph that followed the bloody conflict, 
The Mamluks who manifested military superiority reached an agreement with the Ayyubids that gave them control over southern Palestine including Gaza, and Jerusalem and the Syrian coast. By this agreement the Mamluks not only added new territories to their dominion but also gained recognition for their new state. In addition to the conflict with the Ayyubids of Syria, the Mamluks successfully countered serious rebellions in Middle and Upper Egypt. Then, Ibik, fearing the growing power of the Salaya Mamluks who, with Shadr al dur had installed him as a sultan, had their leader Faris ad-Din Akte murdered. The murder of Akte was followed instantly by a Mamluk exodus to Syria where they joined the Ayyubid and Nazir Yusuf. Prominent Mamluks like Baybars al-Bunduk Durian Kalor and al-Alfi were among those Mamluks who fled to Syria. Ibik became the sole and absolute ruler of Egypt after the Salaya Mamluks who were the supporters of Shadr al dir left Egypt and turned against him. Death by 1257 disputes and suspicion had become part of the relation between Ibik, a sultan who was searching for security and supremacy and his wife Shadr al -Dur, a former sultana who had a strong will and managed a country on edge of collapse during an external invasion. Shadr al -Dur wanted sole rule of Egypt. She concealed sultanate affairs from Ibik. She also prevented him from seeing his other wife and insisted that he should divorce her. Instead, Ibik, who needed to form an alliance with a strong emir who could help him against the threat of the Mamluks who had fled to Syria, decided in 1257 to marry the daughter of Badr ad-Din Loaluar the Ayyubid emir of al mausil Badr ad-Din Loaluar warned Ibik that Shadr al dur was in contact with a Nazir Yusuf in Damascus. Shadr al dur feeling at risk and betrayed by Ibik, the man whom she had made a sultan, had him murdered by servants while he was taking a bath. He had ruled Egypt for seven years. Shadr al dur claimed that Ibik died suddenly during the night but his Mamluks, led by Kutuz, did not believe her and the servants involved confessed under torture. Shadr al dur and the servants were arrested and Ibik's Mamluks wanted to kill her. But the Salif Hayyam Mamluks protected her and she was taken to the Red Tower where she stayed. The son of Ibik the 15-year-old Al-Mansur Ali was installed by the Musia Mamluks as the new sultan. Shadr al dur was stripped and beaten to death with clogs by the bondmaids of Al-Mansur Ali and his mother. Her naked body was found lying outside the citadel. According to the historian Ibn Ayaz, Shadr al dur was dragged from her feet and thrown from the top naked, with a cloth around her waist. She stayed in the moat for three days, not buried, until, one night, a mob came and took off the cloth around her waist because it was silk with pearls. It also had a smell of musk. The servants who were involved in the killing of Ibik were executed. Shadr al dur was buried in a tomb, not far from the Mosque of Tulin, which is a jewel of Islamic funerary architecture. Inside is a myrib decorated with a mosaic of the Tree of Life, executed by artists brought from Constantinople specifically for this commission. The wooden kufic inscription that runs around the interior of her tomb, while damaged, is also of extremely fine craftsmanship. Impact Before their deaths, Ibik and Shadr al dur firmly established the Mamluk dynasty that would ultimately repulse the Mongols, expel the European crusaders from the Holy Land, and remain the most powerful political force in the Middle East until the coming of the Ottomans. Shadr al dur in Egyptian folklore. Shadr al dur is one of the characters of Sarat al Zahir Baybars, a folkloric epic of thousands of pages that was composed in Egypt during the early Mamluk era and took its final form at the early Ottoman era. The tale, which is a mix of fiction and facts, reflects the fascination of Egyptian common people for both Baybars and Shadr al dur Fatma Shadr al dur as the tale names Shadr al dur was the daughter of Caliph al muqtadir whose kingdom in Baghdad was attacked by the Mongols. She was called Shadr al dur because her father dressed her in a dress that was made of pearls.
Her father granted her Egypt as she wished to be the Queen of Egypt and as Saleh Ayyub married her in order to stay in power as Egypt was hers. When Babaz was brought to the citadel in Cairo she loved him and treated him like a son and he called her his mother. Ibik al-Turkmani, a wicked man, came from al-Mausil to steal Egypt from Shajarat Telda and her husband al saleh Ayyub. Shajarat Telda killed Ibik with a sword bit. While fleeing from his son, she fell from the roof of the citadel and died. In addition, Shajaralda's name actually means tree of pearls, which is why, in poetry, her mention shows a fruit tree that is formed by pieces of mother of pearl, coins of Shajaralda. The following names and titles were inscribed on the coins of Shajaralda. al mustazamir al salif Haya malik at al muslimin Walid at al-Malik al mansa Kalul amir al muminan and Shajarat Telda. Also the names of the Abbasid Chalif were inscribed on her coins. Abdallah ben al-Mustanzir Billah.